In this video, we'll go through a little simulation to illustrate what confidence intervals for a population mean do. So here's the situation. We're having a population with an unknown population mean. And we have one sample. We're estimating the sample mean. And we know this is a point estimator for our unknown population mean. And then we can learn how to calculate a confidence interval and this video is to illustrate what these confidence intervals actually do. So let us look at a little spreadsheet and that spreadsheet will be linked in the notes to this video. So you can play around with this. I simulated some population here and what I simulated is, we'll call that the variable x, and I simulated this to come from a normal distribution with mean seven and standard deviation three and here you have all of these data it's a thousand of these okay then i'm drawing samples and let's say we draw one sample so let's think about this yellow sample here okay sample one and i set this here up here i said what sample size i want i said let's say we're having 20 observations in one sample. So what you see here, the yellow highlighted values, basically you see 20 values. And these are randomly drawn from this population here. When you do this yourself, you will see different numbers because every time you change something in the spreadsheet, new random numbers are generated. Okay, so here we have a sample of 20. Now the sample mean of this is here, it's in this field. Right, so this here is the uh, sample mean, 6.681. Now, the actual population mean is 7. Yeah, and of course, we know if we get a sample mean, we never get exactly the population mean. And now we calculate a confidence interval. Here, in this case, we are calculating that with uh, an alpha of 0 0.1, so that means we are calculating a 90, whoops, we're calculating a 90% confidence interval. The technical, de this spreadsheet's not really for the technical detail, but you can see once you look at the spreadsheet, how these lower and upper limits are calculated. They are centered around that sample mean. Okay. And um, basically what we just have is the square root of the population variance divided by the sample size, then times a value from the standard normal distribution, which depends on that alpha. Okay. But this is not the file. Uh, this is not a video for the details. So here we have a confidence interval between 5.58 approximately and 7.78. So this is our confidence interval, our point estimate and our confidence interval. Now in this particular case, as the population mean is seven, seven is inside that interval. So that's why we have that in here. But let's look at a different interval. Let me take this away. So let's look at because I'm taking several, in fact, I am taking 1,000 samples here. Okay, you can see that here, I'm having 1,000 samples. But what I now want to do is I want to look at this one, sample eight. Okay, the eighth sample here. We're getting a sample mean of 8.18, .8, so it's quite different from seven. And if we calculate a lower and upper confidence bounds, we're getting this. So the confidence interval here is from 7.07 .07 to 9.28. So you can see the actual correct population mean, which in practice you will not know, otherwise you wouldn't have to estimate it, is actually outside of that confidence interval. So, any particular confidence interval either contains the population mean or it doesn't contain the population mean. You just don't know because you don't know the population mean. So in what sense, what does it mean if we say we are calculating a 
confidence interval. So to really understand that, you really have to repeat that sampling process many times, like here, 1000 times. So if you scroll down in that spreadsheet, you will see that there are 1000 samples. And for each sample, we calculate the sample mean and then a confidence interval. And we test whether the true population mean is in or out. So when we do this, what do we get here? And this is what this little table here summarizes, basically what we get from these 1000 samples. Turns out that in 891, of in this particular version of these samples, the population mean is contained inside the confidence interval. That's this one. In 109 of the 1000 samples, we have an out here. Okay, so that would be that and that. These are the first two out of these 109. So how do we well, how do we make sense of that? Well, 891 are approximately 89% of 1000. And that's close to 90. Okay, we wanted to calculate a 90% confidence interval. And what that means is that if you were to repeat the sampling process many times, you should expect that in 90% of these, your unknown population mean is contained in that inter in that confidence interval and here you can see that's approximately true in this particular case it's 89 percent so let us change some of the parameters now firstly let us change the sample size okay let's change that to 50 say okay and what you see that changes nothing about these statistics. Well, it changed a little bit because every time I change something, all the random numbers are drawn again. Now I have 89% which are inside. You see, that doesn't add to 100, but that's because of rounding. So changing the sample size, we can change it again to say 40, doesn't change anything about that. You should expect 90% of your confidence intervals to contain the unknown population mean. But what if I change the alpha? So let's change that to 1%. So we, that means we are calculating a 99% confidence interval. Now you can see that close to, now it's actually 100, or here we have 3. Let's actually, I'll just change it to actually a 3% confidence, so 97% confidence interval. And what you see is that 97% of your confidence intervals contain the um contain the unknown true population mean so from that perspective you would argue well why don't i just always calculate say a 99 percent confidence interval let's do that again 99 percent. so here we get 99 and one percent isn't it good that you always can that we always have the confidence interval contain uh contained, sorry, that the confidence interval always contains the population mean. Yeah, that's right. But let's, let me highlight this in yellow. Let's see what happens as you change from a 99% confidence interval to say a 10%. So look at this. We're having a sample mean that will change in a moment. And we're having here, the lower limit is 5.4, the upper limit is 7.8. So that's more than one unit away from the sample mean, the lower limit and the upper limit, more than one unit. So we have a fairly wide confidence interval. If we change that to a 90% confidence interval, so an alpha of one, what you now can see is that the confidence interval becomes much narrower. So here we have a new sample mean because new random numbers, but now the confidence interval is around 0.7 units away the lower limit and the upper limit 0.7 units away okay so yes you can make sure that on average your confidence interval would contain the population mean more often but the price for that is that you calculate a wider confidence interval so there's a trade-off here 
So hopefully this spreadsheet and perhaps playing around a little bit with that spreadsheet allows you to understand how we should interpret confidence intervals. And it has this um, frequential interpretation. Okay, so let's summarize here. Here we are calculating 90% confidence intervals. And if you were to take lots of confidence intervals, calculate lots of confidence intervals from different samples, you should then expect 90% of these to actually contain the unknown population mean. Any particular confidence interval you calculate, you do not know whether it contains the population mean or not. 